good at least it wasn't my battery um, and swoop up and then it it's dark to light see and then you can also use a mop which where is mine my desk is getting crowded like you can pull the color up a little or soften it if it gets too much now that on this surface it really moves nicely all right so I'm going to show you on the um, watermelon what I'm talking about and I'm going to get out the what color is it it's actually candy bar brown candy bar brown and it's like a a reddish brown Let's now these colors are all what they're telling me to use. I didn't choose them myself. And I'm blotting. And I'm going to take this and add just a smidge to the corner. And put it down on my palette. And push. I am pushing the bristles. Push, push. Loading the bristles with paint and water. Blot. Because it was a little too wet. And now I'm going to take this and I'm going to put the paint side right up against that white. All the bristles on the surface. Kind of pity pat, pull it around. And I can go over this again, but first I have to let it dry. I'm just going to pull it up all the way to this end. And let it dry. You can see that, that it looks darker close to the rind now. I'm going to let that dry. Um, what else? We can do some um, shading on our berries and our um, everything. Everything else except for the um, the stems and like the the branches is floating. The rest of the techniques. So um, I'm going to show you. Hopefully, good enough. I'm going to use a little bit of a smaller brush. I like you guys to get used to using a bigger brush so that. Um, a lot of times when people float, they make a stripe and it's not a stripe. It's like a, it's supposed to be a transition of color. So I'm going to get some, um, midnight blue and we'll do the blueberries. And this isn't, it's not that drastic of a color change, but I think you'll be able to see it. I'll try to zoom in a little on this for the blueberries. I will try and keep it in the shot. So I have my blue, I'm loading my brush the same way I just did it with the big one. I have a lot of paint. And you go, okay good. Same thing, all the bristles on the surface. I'm going to shade the bottom, like towards me. That's going to be the shaded area. And I have so much paint and water on my brush that I could do three berries in one shot right and I'm gonna flip my piece around because I'm gonna shade the, t the bottom of these and I'm just going right back to this puddle the puddle on my palette and I'm picking up paint from there and I think I'm running out of water but I'm gonna try and uh, do these three one two all the bristles on the surface not just the tip of the brush because I need the water too have to have the water too to make it so they look good actually that blue is showing up nice all right um, same thing with like say the daisy centers I'm gonna use burnt sienna I'm sorry is it burnt sienna yeah it's burnt sienna um, here it is I like burnt sienna could have pro I could have probably used the candy bar. I bet you that candy bar would have looked pretty too. And I'm going to hit a few of the petals. Again, I'm going to let you see me load the brush. So I go into the water. See, I'm zoomed in. Blot on the paper towel. Corner load the candy bar. And put it down and walk away from it. But I'm pushing the bristles into the paint. And there's water there too. I'm going to blot a little bit more. If I need more paint, there's more paint there. So I'm going to take my piece. Whatever's happening on the palette is what's going to happen on your piece. So you should really like what's going on over there before you put it onto your piece. 
and that's a good indicator of what's going to happen over here. Um, I've been doing this a long time and I've sat next to lots of people in classes that have struggled with floating and it is a wonderful technique when you can do it and when you can't it's a very frustrating so but look at that dimension that you get when you do a nice float when it goes from dark to light and it doesn't just look like a stripe um, I think I want to tint some of these um, petals so I'm grabbing some of the straw color the color that we use to paint the centers and I'm just gonna hit the tips a couple of them not like all of them here and there I might just do a little there I'm not even in the shot I'm so sorry see that's why I don't like to zoom and I'm just tinting some of the petals and it looks so pretty I'm gonna put some burnt um, sienna on them too I'm just going back to my paper palette and getting and swooping into that puddle again where I blended it. But look how pretty that starts to look. I have to I have to zoom back out because it's too hard for me to make sure I'm in the shot. So I'm going to pick up a little bit of that burnt sienna that I just used to shade the center of the daisy and again, I'm going to put that on some of these petals like right kind of near the middle. not even every other one kind of maybe just that one so it's hit and miss just wherever you want to do it um, just adds a little depth I guess a little character a little dimension whatever you want to call it it's, it's um again Margaret Wilson's design she's the one who designed it and that's who I'm basing this design on as well. For the center of the daisy, we're going to highlight it with a touch some white and yet and the straw together, like kind of brush mixed. We need some more white. Basically, a brush mix is when I'm going to load my brush with the yellow first, the straw. So I'm going into my water blot, pick up the yellow, blend it into my brush gonna get a little more and then pick up a little bit of white and blend that in and it's gonna change the color it's gonna make it a little a shade lighter so then when I highlight it'll show up on these centers so I'm gonna put some of that here and here and I can go right back to where I uh, mixed it on my palette and pick up more if I need to so I am cranking this out you guys I just didn't want to take too long so those are getting there I think our daisies are pretty much done except for the dip dots we have to highlight the berries and to do that we're going to use a different color called Cape Cod Cape Cod blue and I am basically going to do this I'm going to go away and come back and I am loading my brush the same way. I just went in the water, blot, pick up a little bit of that blue, and load it onto my bristles. That's really wet, so I blot some more water out. Come back, and I'm gonna take this and put it on the opposite side of all these berries, opposite that shading that we just did. I want this to be kind of bright, because we're gonna put a little, um, a little star kind of are they all pointing up I don't even know I'm gonna point these down this way we're gonna put like a little um you know on a blueberry it has that little like uh, belly button almost thing on the end so that's gonna get highlighted I'm gonna come back and shade my um, watermelon one more time uh, with it was what candy bar yes it was this color I just want to make it nice and dark up against that rind 
and then we'll finish our watermelon. But I'm going to start in the middle and pull it up this way. And then I flipped my brush over. That's nice and dark now. We're going to highlight as well. And we're going to I'm going to get out some apple green. This is the light green and I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to load my brush side load that and we're going to go on the rind this time watch. I'm going to corner load it same way. And this time I'm going to take the color and go uh, up against the white here. And go all the way across the rind. Because it's not actually white white when you um, see a watermelon. Look, I told you this wasn't realistic. But it just comes the white down. And we're going to add a stripe with, it's called dark forest green. I am going to just put a tiny bit of that and I'm going to use like, let's see, a liner brush, but I guess I'm going to use my little detail liner and get some of that on my brush and we're going to make like a stripe. I'll go in and show you this. Kind of space it apart. So basically here's how I do it. I just make it widest at the edge and come up and wide kind of don't make them too close together. You know, watermelons have that little whatever it is pattern on the stripes, right? Is it stripes? Uh -huh. So just roughly kind of put a stripe on that. Okay. And we have to highlight it and add our berries. So I'm going to use the same color that we did originally, which I used rouge and white brush mixed. So I'm going to get my, um, this is, I can't find it, it's in the water. This is my half inch, three eighths inch angle brush that I've been using to shade everything with. And I'm loading it with that put it get it loaded up and then take a little bit of white and make it a little bit lighter and I'm just going to pat this in to the middle area of this watermelon right here I'm just going to kind of pull it down the center really And that's it. I'm going to use my mop just because I just want it to be a little, I'm such a heavy hand, but that's basically a little dark. That looks good. That looks good. Once we put our um, seeds on there, that's a good looking watermelon. And what else am I going to do? I think I'm going to take a break in a minute because I have to charge up all my batteries. Um, while we have that green out though, I think I'm going to use that. I love this. This is a number two liner and it holds a lot of paint and a lot of water. So I'm going to get it wet and load it with the darkest green and make some stems. So let's see. I'm going to have this one Kinda, hmm. Coming down like that. That looks awful, but that's okay. Don't worry. We have to connect this one. And there's like a leaf going this way. There's a leaf over here. There's a leaf over here. We need to connect this. So now I'm going to take off um, where I got it on places I don't want it. I don't really want it on that petal. I just want it behind. Probably would have been better to put the stems on first. 
like um, underneath everything. That would have been a, a good idea. And there's like, there's actually a leaf over here. I mean, you can put leaves wherever you want, but there's kind of one sticking out over here on the original design, which I like. Um, am I still zoomed in? Yeah, I am. Gotta unzoom. I am not a zoom fan because I mess up. Uh, where else? I wanna, I wanna do a kind of like a flat, uh, a leaf coming this way and maybe this way. That would be good, right? And that's good. The next thing is going to be making a stem for the berries. So I'm loading in what I thought was a burnt umber, but it's actually that candy bar and raw sienna. I'm going to see what that looks like because I can always darken it up. And I like to just put the brush down, kind of wiggle it. Oops. It ended. And I'm going to wiggle it to like that and connect them. That was kind of thick, but branches are thicker sometimes. <laughs> We're going to make littler, um, little twiggy things coming off, but like this, I'm going to go. Can you, I hopefully I'm in the shot. There's not enough water on my brush. When this brush can't continue a stroke, that means there's not enough water. Sometimes I'm quiet when I paint because um, you know, it's very, that's why my craft channel is called Serenity. My Serenity Crafts, it's very relaxing to me. All right, so that just gives you an idea and you could add more blueberries. They kind of look spaced out like this one I put kind of closer together berries. And let's see. So I'm going to switch brushes. And I'm going to use that green. We're at nine minutes. I got to go away. Okay, so I'm a little um, not sure where I left off because I had to charge my battery and uh, I watched a show. But I think I'm going to just pick up, <clears throat> we're going to do some leaves. And you can absolutely do your leaves, you can paint them on. So basically, we're going to take the medium color green, and I have my number three round right now. And you can just paint a leaf like that if you want, and kind of like two strokey. I'm going to pull them in one stroke and in two colors. I'm going to double load my brush and I'm going to make leaves. But basically, don't stress over this. It's not um, easy to just do these right out of the box type thing. You know, you're going to, it takes practice. And I'm going to use this number, what is a six filbert. And just like always, I want a little bit of a slicker, wetter puddle. So when I load my brush, I'm going to load it in this medium green. And by loading, I mean pulling it through the paint and getting the paint all through the bristles. I just want to blot it a little bit. I had a lot of water. Then I'm just going to take one side of the brush and pull it through the darker green. So now I kind of have two colors on my brush. And I'm just going to pull um, the bigger green leaves. Um, the ones that are more daisy, the daisy leaves. Because... Um, the ones for the uh, blueberries are a little, they're supposed to be darker green. So that's what I'm going to go with. But I'm definitely going to put a couple here and there. Um, I think I'm going to put another one right here. And you see how I kind of variegated them? I made them look kind of two-tone-ish. I think I am going to add... Um, 
a couple to the blueberry um, twigs too because I just think that it'll bring that color over there too. Um, like I'm just going to put one here, like a little smaller maybe. And here hopefully I'm in the shot. Uh, I'm going to put one here and like here. And see that's how simple it is when you have a, the right brush and your paint is flowing nicely. It just happens that quickly. So you can really, you know, you can just sit here and base coat these too. If this is not working for you, you can paint them in and then shade and highlight with floating. But this is the way I'm going to do them. And then I'm just going to take the same brush and only dark green. And I'm just going to keep it thin down. I'm not going for opaque color. I really want it kind of washy. And I'm going to put in these and they're going to be like kind of more like a shadow leaf and keep them small. I'm going to go all along this, um, this little vine here and add some leaves to the, to the blueberry branch. Hopefully I'm in the shot. But see how dark that came out? I didn't mean that, but um, I think that's really it. I'm going to keep them, but let's see. I think I want to put a dark one there. And I think that's it. I think that's it. And then I'm just going to have to connect everything with a, a another piece of like the stem. But before that, I'm going to add some of this dark green to the stem. I only put um, the medium green on the stem originally. And now I'm just going to pull a little bit of the dark. I don't know if I like that. It kind of looks too obvious. Especially that was dark. But I think I want to make the um, the veins in the leaves with a lighter green. We'll see, because this is looking pretty good right now. I like that dark. Adding the dark and the light just gives it um, contrast, you know? Um, should I add that with, oh, I need one up here. Right here, I have to connect him. And you, it makes you be able to see the veins. I think on my original one, I actually made like veiny veins, not, um, what do I mean? I mean, um, like veins throughout. I think I'm going to get some of this apple green and I'm going to put out some more burnt sienna. Actually, I think I'm going to use the burnt umber, which is a darker shade of brown, um, to do, whoops. It's funny how I can't find, here it is, right in front of me, and my battery is blinking, so I'll probably have to change it. Um, using Now I'm using my little detail liner. This is the really thin liner brush, and I'm going to load that with some of this dark brown, and I'm going to connect these uh, leaves to the um, blueberry branch. Because they can't just be hanging out there, not attached to anything. Kind of looks funny. And you know what else I like to do is these little squiggles like this. Like just kind of let your brush squiggle like that. And it's like a... Sometimes branches have those little twirly things on them. That's what I'm doing, little twirly things. But it starts to come together when you add the stems. I have a quite a glare. I'm sorry about that because my lights are so... I don't know if I turn them down a little if it wouldn't be as bright. Oops. Q-tip. I just don't like that blop. There it goes. And I think everything's attached. And I might just wash this down a little bit, like get it a little wetter 
and just pull along the bottoms of this line. Oops, that was a little too wet. Anyway. And to give it some shading. And maybe even add a little more of a squiggle. Uh, that's too thick. Eh, it'll dry. I think I want to put a squiggle there. I like the squiggles. And there's no rhyme or reason. It's just whatever you feel like doing. Uh, I'm going to put a little bit of that. Oops, I just totally spilled my water. I'm going to put a little bit of this light green, the apple green, and highlight some of these as well. Because it just makes them pop out a little better. Gives them a little more definition. And I like it. That's the only reason I do it. Because I like it. And it's fun. Oops. That's really dark. That needs it over here. If that's really dark. So I just stick my finger on it and it kind of picks it up. It's looking pretty good though. I like this pattern. It's super happy. Alright, so I think that's good with the leaves. And I want to show you how I... Let's get this watermelon finished and we're going to need a little bit of black. And we're going to put seeds on our watermelon. I'm going to change my battery. I'll be right back. Okay, so for the seeds, I'm going to use that tiny little brush. I'm going to flip this around. I think I'll zoom in for this to my watermelon. Hopefully that's in focus. And I'm going to get some of this black on my brush, on the tip of my brush really. And you just want to make, and I've made them all different sizes, like, let me show you this one. Make sure it gets in focus. So they're about that big on this one. On my original one, I think they're a bit bigger. But they definitely look like that little teardrop shape of a, of a watermelon seed. And I kind of start in the middle and work my way towards the edge and I leave a space and make sure you pull that point at the tip. So it's really kind of like a wiggle and a pull. And that one turned out much fatter. But they don't have to be perfect. They just have to be a hint I think that's kind of good actually. It's probably enough. I'll put one down there. One up there. Every single piece that I do comes out different because you don't, you know, you're just doing it as you go. I'm going to let them dry a little bit. We're going to use the black again on the same brush and make these little stars. And by that I just mean, hopefully I'm still zoomed in and you'll see. So I have black on my brush and we're going to make basically this shape on top of the blueberries. Something like that. And we'll be able to fix it. So just kind of try and, I mean I haven't actually, actually you could just make a regular star. That would be a good idea too because it's going to give you those points. And I put this right on, not quite touching the um, highlighted end. I'll show you. So I should be in the shot here. Hold on. So I'm gonna I'm gonna just make a five pointed star and see. Oh yeah, that looks cool. I like that. So the five pointed star, and then you can kind of just round it off. So if you make that standard shape that we learned in school to make a little star, that'll do it. And I just, um, oops, kind of lost it there. That one I got lost. I make it close to the end, but not totally at the end. And then these are all highlighted on this end. So let me try and show you that. 
Um, hopefully I don't forget that I'm zoomed in and keep painting. We can highlight this more. See, I forgot what I was doing. That looks good. Um, so just do a five-pointed star. That's really basically it. I think I added this one after. That's okay. I'm going to put, I added this one when I came back because I thought it looked a little blank, like naked there. But look how cool. I'm going to kind of zoom back out again so you can see. Just doing that, what that does, it adds the little detail, right? I am quite far away. Um, <clears throat> what else do I want to do? We're getting close, so I think while I'm letting that dry, the last thing I want to do is the, um, the dip dots around the centers because if you stick your hand in them, you kind of, you know, messes you up. So I'm going to get some white, some nice fresh white, and I'm going to use a flat brush. See, my, I'm getting kind of messy here, but there's plenty of places to put it. I'm going to use this, like, number 10 flat, but it's whatever really good flat brush you have um, to make checks with because these are so fun to make. I could make these all day. And get your um, paint, kind of load your brush, but it's going to be um, a more washy than opaque consistency. So not quite like ink, not quite opaque, pretty wet because you want them to be sheer almost. So I'm going to start here and I like the brick look. So they kind of look like bricks and this is not sheer at all. And you can skip a place. Um, see how I didn't fill in every spot. And then I'm going to put one here and here. Um, just kind of go around the pattern where the pattern is. I just flipped my brush over. Um, and just pull some, pull some, um, checks, I guess. But these, like I said, they look more like bricks to me. They're the shape of bricks. They're not exactly square. And I'm going to put one here and here. Kind of hit and miss. I like the way that looks. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to leave that. Come back. And just gives it a nice little frame. I'm going to just finish this off. One here. And that's good. These are way thinner looking because it's where I loaded my brush that they look the darkest. I think I'm just going to go over this one a little darker. A couple of them. Then we're going to um, shade. We're going to do a side load of the dark blue. So that's actually, what, uh, midnight, right? Midnight blue. Shake it up. And I'm going to do a side load right next to those checks. I do it to the right of them. So I'm using my um, chisel, my angle brush. I'm going to pick up a little bit of the blue on the corner and load my brush. And just come in with a little bit of this next to the check. So to the right side of the check. I'm putting a little shade of this blue and it's just going to fill in, give it a little more depth, I guess. Um, I liked it when I did it. I changed from the original. I did it this way instead of shading on the actual white check. That's what it had. The directions have you do. I decided to do it next to them and I liked the way that looked. So you can do whatever you want to do. There's no rules. It's your piece. You can leave this piece, this part off because it actually looks perfectly fine with just the checks. 
or just the white I mean, yeah. Um, without the shading, it would be fine. So if you love your checks, they're looking good to you, you don't have to add this at all. I don't mind. So that's what that's looking like. I think our blueberries are needing, they, they get um, tinted. They get a tint of like a berry color, but I think I wanna highlight them again. So I'm gonna get my Cape Cod blue. I have a little bit left and I'll, I'm gonna add a little bit of white to it because it just doesn't look bright enough at the tips of those berries. So I'm gonna go, hmm, I think I'm gonna do it like this, like around the star. Let's see what that looks like. I think that looks pretty cool. Um, and in the other pieces, I actually made a line, but I think this looks good with just a flute like that. Let's see, you see how that kind of makes the top pop? I like it, I like it, I like it, I like it. Okay, so this one's not even shaded yet, the bottom one, that's the one I added. So I basically am just floating around this side of the star we just made with a little bit of the lightest blue and white mixed. And I really like <clears throat> how that's making the um, that star pop. I think we could actually shade on the other side of it. I'm gonna try that. And this is not um, in the directions, this part. It's completely, um, I've gone rogue right now. I'm gonna shade down here because that hasn't been shaded yet. But I wonder if shading, so now I'm going rogue. That didn't, I don't like that as much. I'm just gonna leave that. I think I wanna tint these more than I, I should shade them again. I think tinting them would be all I need to do. So they're looking berry-ish. We're gonna tint them. What else do we need to do? Uh, just the dip dots. Everything's connected. Oh, there's a little teeny highlight on these little tiny um, seeds, which I think I wanna add one more seed. I just feels, it feels a little naked over here. Boy, that was way too wet. I had too much water in my brush. I had to blot first, pick up some black. Put it right there. That looks more even. Okay, so now um, we're done. We're pretty much done. Don't forget to sign your piece. And I think I signed, I've been signing with green or blue the dark green or the dark blue. Black would look fine, but for the little tiny seeds, you wanna just touch a tiny touch of white. To Awkward, okay, it's not even that zoomy, but I am, tiny touching. Oops, that's kind of thicker. You really just, you don't want to cover up the black. Just put a little, even next to the seed is fine. See, I'm, I'm, I'm all over the place with this. It's not very um, conform. Was, is that what I want to say? Uh, uniform, sorry. This one's like in the middle, so I'm going to move it over to the side. Just over to here. Thank you. And that's it. Actually, that other one's kind of over there, and this is too small. Okay. But, you know, it's, that's not the main thing of what you want to say. But these blueberries need to get tinted, tinted. And I can't remember exactly what color. I know it's like one of the, like, say, uh, I think it's tomato spice. It could have been candy bar, but I think I'm going to go with the tomato spice. 
and I'm side loading this on my, um, I think it's a 3 8 inch angle. This one, I'm going to put a little bit of tomato spice. It's like that red color. And just hit it. That's kind of bright, but it looks cool. It's kind of almost looks purple. Doesn't that look good? It's so good. All right, and I'm going to do these right here. I think my son's home. Okay. So they have a little tint. So pretty when you add the tint. And then we're going to do a little dot of white on each berry. <clears throat> hey, Matt. And I'm just going to put it on the opposite side of the tent. Can you see that? I'm, am I in the shot? I don't even know if I highlighted that one yet. I don't think I did. We can, I can highlight it on top. I'm going to go here, here, and here. All right, and then the last thing we're going to do are these dip dots. And I think they are, I think they're candy bar and that tomato spice. So that bright red I just used and like the little bit more of a brown red. I'm going to use my stylus. I'm going to use the small end of the stylus. And we're going to come to the daisies. And um, you just have to put it you know what, I want to make sure they're shaded. I'm going to go back, just because I'm being whatever. See, you can, it's just fun for me to play, but basically, you don't have to do this. Um, is there any? I don't think that's raw sienna. I don't think it's raw sienna. Let me see if... That just looks good, though. It needed to be a little darker. I think. So I'm going to slide this around. Am I in the shot? Yes. See how it's just, it makes it kind of, it gives it a curve. And this one, I'm just giving it a little more of a daisy center. My son is a great whistler. I don't know if you can hear him whistling. All right, so that is good. Now we're gonna add <clears throat> dip dots. I mean, I could, yeah, I'm just, I gotta stop going back and forth, but I'm gonna use this tiny little side of this. And first I'm gonna go into the candy bar and I go big and let some be small and some be big and I only go halfway around I don't know why um, did she go halfway around you could also make veins in your um, in the uh, petals they could have veins but this is just how this design has been going for me um, it's just how I do been doing them all and I like how it turns out so I'm going to continue, and oops, look what I did. See, there's dip dots under there, and I my palette went right up on it. So this is basically the end here, guys. Um, I really hope you like this piece. If you have any questions or comments, let me know. Um, I did it, this is the second time I'm doing it, because... I just, it was too long. So I know I rushed. I definitely did this one faster. I just pushed along and didn't explain a ton, but I have lots of other painting videos up that you can refer to. Um, and like I said, if you want to, if you want to ask some questions, I'll try and uh, answer your questions. Um, I can tell you some things. Uh, I would basically just say make sure you have good brushes because your work is only going to be as good as your the tools. So if you're using beat up brushes and the bristles aren't 
staying together and stuff that that's going to affect your work um, loading the brush properly is important because I mean again whatever's happening um, on the palette is going to happen on your piece you know you can't expect miracles when you get to this part if you're not um, loading your brush properly you know so take your time and the strokey parts of it like the leaves um, takes practice they just take practice and I painted for years and years and years and years so that's that's just part of it the process and like I said you can just paint them in you don't have to um, uh, stroke them in like I did so um, don't stress make it fun make it what you want it to be don't um, if you can't do it don't quit you know uh, give it a chance all right so this is it like I said I want you to sign your name uh, put the year so when you look back at it you can say oh my gosh I painted that I'm so much better now <laughs> um, what else put your name and varnish I use this brush this has been my varnish brush forever and it's soft the bristles are very soft some people like to use mop brushes to varnish um, I use this is what I've been using and I've used on my other pieces I, I like a matte varnish a matte or a satin um, and I basically just uh, I'm gonna move this out of the way because I don't want to stick my fingers in that um, I will sometimes just take the varnish oops and dribble it on a little bit just dribble it on to where I know I'm gonna cover the surface and then pretty quickly cover the whole thing you know if you just do it quickly and try and pick up any puddles and get it even kind of go around the edge and get your drips let it dry and do like two thin coats you're good to go and that should last you so I hope you like this it's a very fun piece now let me just show you on these um, blueberries See how on these blueberries I did it differently? I used a little, like a liner brush and that light color and just kind of outlined the star that way. Can you see that? So, I mean, if you can't, if you're not happy doing floats, um, do it that way. But I, I kind of like the way these turned out when I shaded up there, when I highlighted up there. I have to do this one. Um... I like it I think it looks cool uh, yeah so um, all three like look at this watermelon this and this what let me zoom back out all of my flowers look different everything looks different um, my dip dots are still wet but I want to compare this watermelon is much longer these daisies are on top of each other and I should probably separate them right there. I'm going to put a, sh I'm going to shade. Look, I'm just going to grab a little bit of this. I don't know if it's, I don't think it's burnt sienna. It's not. Um, this is burnt sienna or burnt umber. It's fine. But I just want to separate these petals right here. I'm going to do like a shading right here, like to make it look like that petal is overlapping that one. And I think that did it. And I could actually, no, I'm just going to leave it just like that. Enough is enough, right? Um, but yeah, so those flowers are like right on top of each other. Let me see this. I have one more to compare to. I think this was the first one I did and I used the pattern. But they all look different because um, they are. Each one is different and I like them all. So again, take your time and enjoy. Thanks so much for watching.